Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and this is 10 Minute Workshop where 10 minutes in the workshop is never enough, it's never 10 minutes and it's never 10 minutes wasted. In the workshop this week I want to talk about Abronet. Is it truly the sandpaper of the gods or is it just another fine mesh you've gotten me into? <laughs> it's coming up next. <laughs> You've no idea how long I've been waiting to make that joke. Um, so Abronet, what's Abronet? It's the, I don't know if it's the first it's uh, certainly the, the, the one that popularised the idea of a mesh backed abrasive. So instead of having little holes that's punched uh, through the paper backing that you align with your sander base, it actually has a mesh sort of base um, which lets the air, lets the dust through. Uh, so you don't have to align the holes. Um, uh, I've got to confess, I'm I'm not a huge fan of Abronet. I know that's sort of heresy in some circles. Um, the main reason for that is, I mean, one of the USPs of, of Abronet is that if you've got sanders from a variety of different manufacturers, you can get a consistent abrasive uh, across all your sanders, so you don't have to worry about you know, matching hole patterns. Um, now, last year I did a set of videos uh, comparing these two sanders. It's the my most used little Festool orbital sander, the RTS 400, and this little fella, the uh, Bosch GSS 161A. Uh, the Bosch is a Bosch Professional, it's about 75 quid uh, at the time I tested it, and the Festool was close to 300. S uh, in terms of specification, they're quite similar. I wanted to see what the difference was. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, check it out, there's a link up there. Um, but I thought it was worth recreating the dust collection tests that I did, but instead of using the manufacturer's own abrasives, this time we'll use Abronet, to see what the difference is. Okay, so this test is very simple. It's a, a grid of holes drilled into a piece of MDF that's been covered with filler. Uh, I've weighed the filler out so we get the same amount exactly on each one. Uh, and basically, we're just gonna sand that off. We set the board up at an angle like this. We'll mark where the front edge comes to, and we should be able to see a line on a black plastic bag uh, as to where uh, the edge uh, uh, has been, and we should be able to see a line of, of dust uh, if any escapes. Um, so we'll start with the Bosch. We've got a fresh piece of abrasive, uh, a fresh piece of P120 in there, uh, and we're all connected up and ready to go. And let's see how this does. So that's the brush. Um, you should be able to see pretty clearly, and certainly you can see it from up there, uh, between where the base of the board was. Uh, there's a very distinct, clear line. In fact, it spreads a little bit further out this way as well. So, you know, definitely not all the dust is being uh, collected. I think that's better than it was last time. Uh, I'd need to go back and check. Um, but so far, yeah, the Bosch, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of what I'd expected, to be honest. Um, but let's see how the Festool does. Okay, so next up is the Festool with the interface pad. And again, nice new piece of uh, P120 abrasive. And we'll see how that does. Now... So I've got to say, oh, I've got to say the interface pad on this doesn't do the handling of the sander any favours at all. I don't know if you saw there, but the, the board was wriggling around a lot more um, and it's actually punctured the uh, plastic there. Um, but basically there's, there's n well, almost no sanding dust escaped. There are a few little white specks which are little crisp crunchy pieces where you sometimes get a little ridge in the sander and obviously no sander would collect those. Uh, but that's all really. There's a very 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 faint, I mean there's absolutely no line there at all. Um, so it, I don't think the Abronet has improved Festool's dust collection at all uh, but it's definitely worsened 
the handling. Okay, so we've set up our edge testing rig. It's a few inches off the ground, so we should see a nice, clear, well-defined line of any uh, dust that collects there. Uh, and we'll start, as before, with the Bosch. We've got a new, we've gone for a P180 this time uh, in the Abronet. Same level of dust extraction. Okay, so we're going to have to ignore this little spurt because I just brushed that onto the surface. But the rest of it is pretty clear. There's a line here. Okay, so we've reset the, the stage here, flip the board around, fresh edge on here, new piece of um, dust sheet backing material down. Uh, we do the test again with our Festival sander this time. So yeah, not a great deal you can say about that. Again, is there really? Uh, you know, no, no defined line along there at all. You had know, to show the edge of the board where dust was falling down. A few little specks, uh, paint speckles or whatever, that have clearly come off the surface of the board, uh, as they were with the um, with the Bosch one as well. But no, no dust escaping from that pad at all, which for an edge sanding uh, uh, process is, is pretty amazing um, especially when you consider that you know this this interface pad I, I, I say I'm, I'm no fan of these um, one of the reasons why I don't use um, Abronet is because it, it does introduce such a large degree of squishiness and uncertainty to the sanding stroke um, uh, to be able to get still get that sort of edge result it's pretty special, pretty special, pretty amazing. Oh, so, in conclusion, what do you think? Um, I don't think Abronet really does itself any favours having this foam-based backing pad. Uh, it's, it's pretty nasty. It uh, doesn't add to the experience at all. I don't know why it's this thick. I don't know why it's this squishy. I don't know why it can't be a you know, millimetre thick piece of rigid plastic with a, a different sort of Velcro types on each side. Um, so uh yeah it was it was not a, a joyous experience using the abrasive with that sort of pad um that said it didn't seem to detract from the dust collection at all uh hopefully you've seen from the tests today that the uh, the festal uh, still comprehensively beat uh the bosch in in the dust collection tests uh, even though they were both using the same abrasive um one thing i did notice is that uh Although it seemed to be, there seemed to be less uh, dust escape uh, from the Bosch. Uh, there did seem to be an awful lot collected on the pad. Uh, so uh, it's possible that it's just getting through the backing pad and not being hoovered up. So that may affect the long term life of the pads on your Bosch. Um, in terms of the actual abrasive itself, well, I'm not going to be swapping 
out to Abernet, as I say, it doesn't really, doesn't really work with me. I prefer to have a range of abrasives that fit my sanders. Uh, whereas I, I do understand though, if you've got uh, a variety of different sanders from different manufacturers, then the, the appeal of a mesh-backed abrasive uh, is quite considerable because you get a consistent abrasive across all your different sanders. Um, one thing that did surprise me, uh, I've got to say, uh, is that Abronet was quite a lot more expensive than uh, Festol's Granat. A box of Festol Granat in this size, box of 50, will set you back 17 or 18 pounds, whereas, uh, whereas the, uh, the Abronet in the same size, a box of 50, was over 20, 22, 24, somewhere around there from a main dealer. Um, so yes, uh, uh, if you want to try uh, an alternative mesh-backed abrasive, then Festol do make uh, granite uh, in, in a mesh-backing uh, Festol uh, granite net, I think they call it. So that may well be worth a look. You might even find that it's uh, cheaper than Abronet, who knows. Um, but that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Do share it out amongst your friends and consider subscribing. If you haven't already done so, I just check back on a Friday. And there's always something new up at noon. I'll see you then. Take care.